have you guys been following the new zoning stuff? Or Somewhat, or? yeah. It's never like oh, all hey, one place. Now you gotta log in. Mm -hmm. You know? I don't think they'll roll that out until the next. She got a Chambers 2017. I think you got a. <laughs> So when you somebody log gets in, close or go to council, yeah. here's your login, Dave. Thank you. Take a look at the changes. It's uh, capital it's someone when they come capital up the chambers, chambers 2017. Someone would have a red document that we could you know, review or look at. We're getting there. <laughs> That's okay. That's not there you go. Now you can get out of your presenter. Bert should be in there. Perfect. Okay. Should have the date first. Oh, look at that. There it is. That's nice. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Did that uh, be placed by uh, Grand Wood or was that school they wanted to do Did that die at the city council? What's that one? Remember the one that had 40, the last time we had 40 or 50 people eject? Oh. And it was the yeah, that, four sets of that didn't get approved. <coughs> I think there were only three of us here. It didn't get through planning and it didn't get through the CPC. Again or well it hadn't even number he they came to us for the variance before it even went through CPC. Uh, which we thought was odd. <coughs> yeah. They must have been so sure of themselves that yeah. But with 50 people staring down the, you know, the application with you saying no. Well, and I fell by that. And I did say frankly that they approved it in the first place. But it's a completely different set. Okay, so there are some sort of Hollywood Boulevard near that elementary school. The streets are really narrow over there. And cars are parked on both sides of the street already. The month I missed, you guys, you guys. Oh yeah, that's right. You were you were down uh, playing Ace. tennis in playing Florida, tennis and catching the rays. That's right. Mm. Have you had much tennis this uh, spring? <coughs> yeah, of course I play. Uh, you know, indoors a lot too. And then we play. We are a good place. Hi, Todd. Good afternoon. Hey, Todd. Oh, it works. Good afternoon. It is 3.02. We will call the meeting to order. Start with the roll call, please. Todd Parker. Here. Bill Vernon. Here. Lou Louder. Here. Tim Bakura. Here. Thank you. I'm going to read my opening statement and then we'll discuss the previous meeting's minutes and then begin. The Board of Adjustment is a quasi-judicial board appointed by the Mayor and City Council. The board is not a part of the city administration and is governed by both the city and state codes and ordinances. The board is made up of five members. Currently there are four active members and one uh, position open. The chair and myself cannot make a motion, but it has a vote. There must be a majority of votes to pass. No motion made by the board will be the same as denial. We have all four active members present. If you would like to wait, you have the right to have your case be tabled until the next scheduled meeting, but there's no guarantee of a full board as we do not know when the open seat will be filled. <coughs> Would anyone like to table their case? There are none. The board is empowered to vary the regulations of the zoning ordinance with its harmony of general purpose and the intent where board makes a finding of fact that there are practical difficulties or unnecessary hardships that may prevent carrying out the literal provisions of the ordinance. The board reviews conditional use requests and considers the following. Is the requested use consistent with the intent and purpose of the ordinance and with the comprehensive plan? Will the use have a substantial adverse effect upon adjacent property and the character of the neighborhood? And will the proposed use be compatible with the immediate neighborhood? The board also reviews variance request. A variance request should only be granted if the petitioner establishes that an unnecessary hardship will result if the zoning regulations are strictly enforced. 
There are seven criteria for actions in a variance that were in your packet. A general rule of thumb is that a variance should prevent a hardship and not grant a special privilege not available to other landowners in a similar situation. Unnecessary hardship means the land in question cannot yield a reasonable return if used for only the purpose allowed in that zone. The issue in question is due to a unique circumstance and not central to the conditions and not to the central conditions of the neighborhood. The hardship must not be self-created and the use authorized by the variance will not alter the essential character of the locality. As a board of the city, all testimony is welcome. Decisions are based on the facts and evidence allowed under city code. I will introduce your case and the city staff will provide details regarding the request. The petitioner will then at, be asked to come <coughs> forward to this podium here and please use the microphone to present your case and give your name and address for the record. If the proceedings become lengthy, testimony may be limited to new facts or evidence not already presented. Objectors will then have an opportunity to address the board. Objectors shall also state their name and address for the record and then state their objections or concerns. I will then call for any board questions or discussion. Final summaries and additional comments may then take place. Based on a motion and a second, I will call for a vote. If your variance is approved, please understand that you may still have to comply with other regulations and codes, such as applicable building codes. Please visit with the Department Services Department official for any clarifications. We have a quorum, and with that, uh, we will begin. I would take any edits, additions, or corrections to the minutes, if any. Mr. Chairman, I have reviewed the minutes of our last meeting and would make a motion to approve those as presented. Second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? There is none. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. And with that, I'll turn it over to you. Good afternoon. Our first uh, item this afternoon is a conditional use request. Uh, this comes to us from Cedar Rapids Cellular Telephone for property at 618 14th Avenue Southwest. And I believe Mr. Barker just went through these uh, criteria for recommendation. Uh, here's the location map. As you can see, it's just west of the city's uh, public service center off of 6th Street Southwest. And uh, what the proposal is for a 70 foot tall monopole communication tower. Uh, the site's about two and a half acres. It's zoned industrial. We do have residential properties 258 feet away, which is why we need a conditional use review being under 300 feet. Um, we've got some associated equipment that'll be outdoor cabinets and everything on the ground is uh, proposed to be surrounded with eight foot of uh, steel solid fencing to screen the view. Uh, we've got an aerial view of the property for you, and then the tower itself would be right in front of this uh, Quonset hut-shaped building. The surrounding zoning, uh, in a lot of industrial public zoning for the cities, and then the, re the single-family residential is to the south. So here we're looking at, looking west from 6th Street is approximately where the tower will be placed. Uh, the site plan shows the footprint of the compound for the tower and the electrical cabinets. Uh, they've, they've given us a, a blow up of the compound and, and a little view of what it would look like from the ground. Uh, this is a profile of the tower they'd like to construct. And they've provided uh, an image of the fence that would screen the bottom of it. And uh, well, that's where we are right now. So with that, I'll, uh, uh, Planning Commission has, has reviewed this proposal and recommended uh, unanimous approval. And with that, I'd turn it back to the board. Thank you. Is the applicant present? If you would step forward and state your name and address for the record, please. Maybe. Uh, my name is Julie Shebeck. My address is 2124 Larry Drive, Northeast in Cedar Rapids. 
Um, basically, I'm here on behalf of Cedar Rapids Cellular Telephone. Dave did a nice job of just uh, pretty much laying out the basics, and I'm just here to answer any questions that you may have in addition to it. So, Okay. Any questions from the board? Are there any objectors present? There are none. Um, yes, we've please. not received any objections. I, I do need to, to just clarify something. I think in your CPC minutes, there's a reference to landscaping requirements, and, and that turned out to be a staff mistake caused by me. So uh, we really don't need any landscaping for this uh, based on the zoning. So the, the steel fencing would, would meet the code requirements. Just about that earlier. <laughs> what, what is the dimension, if you know off the top of your head, if the pool is 70 feet between the, the closest boundary of the property? Is it Ooh, hang on, hang closer on. than 70 feet? Oh, have, no. Um, the zoning ordinances require that to the property lines, it's got to be 50, at least 50%, and we are well in compliance oh, to that. 107. Thank right. You. Yeah. And then it's further to the closest resident. So. Thank you. Mr. Ch Mr. Chairman, I would move that conditional use 024557-2017 be granted. Second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? There is none. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. You can follow up with building services for next steps. Thank you. Go ahead whenever you're ready. Okay, our, our second case is an, another conditional use request from Knox Properties, and this would be for three parcels of land, uh, 2355 through 2519 16th Avenue Southwest. And this request is uh, to, to uh, have building materials sales and out, outdoor storage in a commercial C3 district. Um, as you can see the location here, just kind of a east of the former Kmart <coughs> on the southwest side. Uh, we'll be combining these three parcels. We'll be removing one existing building and, and they're proposing to put up three new structures. Uh, the future land use map has this as urban medium intensity. So this does fall within that category. The site's about five, 5.28 acres. Uh, between uh, demolishing and, and new construction, the, the building size stays this, roughly the same, about 21,000 square feet. And uh, they're providing the parking that they are required. Basically, all the improvements exist. Um, the only changes would be screening of the outdoor storage. We see on the zoning map here, it's a strip of commercial along 16th. We do have residential to the south. There's an intervening commercial lot between these, and then, then we move into uh, residential properties heading south. So uh, as we can see, the, the use is already uh, occurring on site. Uh, so what we're here for is uh, this outdoor plumbing material storage, which will be screened and here is their site development plan. Uh, these two buildings to the east remain. Uh, and then we have three new buildings proposed here. And uh, the Planning Commission reviewed this and, and recommended approval. Uh, and with that, I'll turn it back to the board. Thank you. Is the petitioner present? If you would please come forward and state your name and address for the record, please. Doug Brain, 1540 Midland Court. Um, the, the, everything was pretty well covered. Uh, basically just kind of cleaning up the site, uh, updating the buildings, and there will be some removal of hard surface, and then uh, there will be water quality uh, based on um, the hard surface that was added without a site plan, it looks like. 
And what type of screening will be for the outdoor storage? What uh, uh, type of fence? They don't have it yet, but we're told not, not chain link with slats, so something more structurally sound, wood privacy fence or, or something like that. <coughs> Dave, what if any requirement on the fence is there for material? Yeah, as he stated, uh, we, we don't accept uh, slats and chain link anymore, so okay. it'll have to be some kind of a solid okay. fence. They, they haven't told us exactly how they're gonna do it, but. Okay. Thank you, any other questions from the board? <laughs> Just a point of clarification, it, they will re be required to get a separate permit for the screening, so when they come in to do that, we'll review it to make sure it complies with the code. And they can go six to eight feet in height. Thank you. Are there any objectors present? There are none. Any other questions from the board? Mr. Chairman, I would move that conditional use 024575-2017 be granted. Second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? There is none. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, moving on to our third item, a request f uh, by Heather Deppe for property at 1654 27th Street Northwest, and this would be to have a, a daycare center in a single family residential district. Uh, here we see the location map, and uh, we're not, not proposing any site changes. Uh, it's a uh, little under 9,000 square foot lot. Uh, 1169 square foot building they have the required parking to, to operate a daycare center three off-street parking spaces sea of residential zoning here um, got some multifamily backing up to it to the west and here's an aerial we can see that uh, the backyard uh, again, it looks like we're, we're already established, but we've got a solid screen fence around the backyard. Uh, the off-street parking on a widened driveway in the front of the building. Uh, here's a shot of it from the street view. And uh, staff has no objections. We, we recommend approval with the condition <coughs> that they comply with uh, building and fire codes as applicable and uh, planning commission has reviewed this and, and recommended the same and with that i'll turn it back to the board thank you is the petitioner present you would come forward and state your name and address for the record please my name is melissa buggy i'm the other provider in the home and my address is 1654 27th street northwest sea rapids iowa and what would you care to add to the case? Um, I just have the different things that is required by the state for registration. I don't know if you wanna look at it. We have to have a, on each floor has to be a certain type of fire extinguisher, which is on both levels present. Um, we are getting new fire alarms that are both the smoke detector and the heat sensor, and they will be located in every room of child operation. Actually, we have a rental home, so they'll be in every room. Um, we also have the carbon monoxide alarms. We do the fire drills that is required for the state. And is um, this also uh, used as a residence as well or just a it's daycare? our home okay. our family home got it we just do the regular home daycare I understand any questions for the petitioner from the board how many uh, children do you usually have 12 or less for two providers we are state registered as a category C and you're okay with complying with we are compliant I have any paperwork no. I mean you're 
whatever the state and local building fire codes <coughs> yes local code, you'll comply with all of those we are compliant yep. yep are there any objectors present there are none any other comments or questions from the board Mr. Chairman, I would move to approve conditional use 024619-2017 subject to the condition noted herein. Second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? There is none. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. You can follow up with building services for next steps. Okay, uh, moving on to the variances. Our first variance request is for a reduced rear yard setback at 175 Thompson Drive Southeast. And this is zoned R1 single family. This comes about as a part of a property subdivision. Uh, the church has always had a parsonage on their property which they'd like to uh, parcel off and, and sell. And unfortunately, <coughs> we're, we're coming up a little short on the rear yard. We're, this is gonna give us a 24.9 foot rear yard, whereas 30 feet would be required by code. Uh, no objections have been received. Uh, we've got a couple of different street views here. Um, this kind of shows uh, with our shortfall in the lot comes right here and, and you can see the the proposed property line is, is basically just following the, the constructed lot, the parking lot. So th this would be the parsonage that, that then would then become a, a saleable lot. And uh, uh, staff has reviewed and has no objections to this and we've received no objections. With that, I'd turn it back to the board. Thank you, is the petitioner present? You would come forward and state your name and address for the record, please. My name is Dave Johnson. Uh, my address is 2073 Foxbourne Southeast, Cedar Rapids, Iowa. And I'm and representing Bethany Lutheran Church as a trustee. And is there anything you'd like to add to your request? Um, we shorted the lot in the back uh, because our intent was to deliver the fence line, the existing fence to the homeowner so they would have all that. The remaining remain with the church. Uh, we have put in the required, uh, city required uh, sidewalk out front. Thank you, any questions from the board? Are there any objectors present? There are none. Any further questions or comments from the board? Mr. Chairman, I would move that uh, variant 024679-2017 be granted because of unique circumstances and compatibility with the area. Second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? There's none. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. You can follow up with building services for next steps. Thank you. Whenever you're ready, Vern. Okay, the next item is also a variance. Uh, this is variance uh, VAR 02-4746. Dash 2016. This is for property at uh, 1210 B Avenue Northwest. Uh, this is consideration of a variance request to maintain a duplex occupancy beyond the 24 <coughs> month uh, 24 months of uh, con uh, continued ver vacancy in an R3 uh, single family residence zoning district is requested by uh, April and Quina Bain. Just a little bit of background information. Uh, this was a legal non-conforming property. Uh, they would like to uh, 
maintain the non-conforming status so that they would be able to market it as a duplex. It's been a duplex since 2000, uh, 1987. Uh, there are two separate uh, utility connections to the structure. It makes it more difficult to convert it back to a single family home. Uh, they will be bringing it up to code uh, and by providing this additional time, give them some time to do some additional work to the, uh, to the site. Uh, part of that uh, code uh, compliance is that they will be adding some additional off street parking to meet the two parking spaces per unit. Uh, the signs have been posted and there have been, uh, been no objections received. Uh, there are uh, three conditions that the property shall be in compliance on or before July 1st, 1988, or 2018, uh, within the 24 months of recorded vacancy. All required permits and inspection shall be obtained and a final certificate of occupancy be obtained on or before July 1st, 2018 and that the four uh, off-street parking spaces uh, be provided or variants obtained prior to a final certificate of occupancy on July 1st, 2018. This is just a uh, aerial photo showing the property. This is Roosevelt Heights School. Uh, this is 13th Street, C Avenue and B Avenue. Uh, they would be providing the parking coming off the uh, alley on the north side of the property. Uh, they are also able to uh, have a couple of off-street parkings uh, stalls or on-street <coughs> parking stalls adjacent to the site. This is just looking from uh, B Avenue uh, north at the property. This is the existing home. Oops. And uh, at that point, that's all I have. I'll turn it back to the chair. Thank you. Is the petitioner present? If you would come forward and state your name and address for the record, please. I'm Judy McCoy, 3736 Winnick Road <coughs> Northeast. And I'm here for Baines because they live in Arizona. And is there anything you'd like to add to the request? Um, we are in the middle of a sale and it's closing fairly soon. And that buyer has agreed to do the concrete work to do the four parking spaces and the reason uh, the owners had a management company and they had a hard time <coughs> renting the property because B Avenue was torn up for about four or five months last summer and fall I think otherwise he did a good job of explaining <laughs> unless you have any questions thank you are there any questions from the board for the applicant. So the only variance is to extend the time period. Is that to correct? It's a yeah. extension to go on, be, go beyond the one year uh, time limit for legal non-conforming uses before they lose their non-conforming status. Are there any objectors present? There are none. Any other questions or comments from the board? Mr. Chairman, I would move that variant 024746-2017 be granted uh, because of uh, unique circumstances and not detrimental to the area. Second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? There is none. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. <coughs> Go ahead. The next item is also a variance request for property at 117 Fifth Avenue Southwest. This is a variance uh, VAR 02 uh, 4749 2017. This is consideration of a variance request for reduced setback for a future uh, attached garage addition to a single family dwelling in the RMF2 multifamily residence zone district is requested by Omar Al Ali. Just a little background they're looking at going from a, a minimum required 25 foot uh, setback to a five foot rear yard setback. 
and this would allow it to be an attached garage instead of having a detached garage set further back off the alley. Uh, as I mentioned, the property is zoned multifamily. They're looking at building a 24 by 24 garage. This is a very small lot in the core area on the southwest side of town. The lot is only uh, 42 by 80 feet uh, deep. Uh, they would not exceed the 50-foot uh, uh, lot coverage uh, limitation. Uh, this would allow them to uh, get some vehicles uh, in a building and some other yard, yard items that uh, have become an issue as far as code violations on the site. I uh, would note that uh, signs were posted, no objections were received. Uh, there would be two staff recommended conditions. The property shall obtain all required building permits and inspections pursuant to the final certificate of occupancy being issued for the new structure. Uh, the applicant property owner shall remain in compliance with all provisions of the zoning ordinance and, compliance with, and comply with uh, all compliance dates uh, prescribed by the uh, zoning enforcement zoning inspector. It's just a location map showing the property. This is uh, the amphitheater, the police station. Uh, this is Fifth Avenue. This vacant lot, this is a 2014 aerial where the new Metropolitan uh, building is being built. And then the property uh, uh, between uh, First and Second Street on Fifth Avenue on the corner of the alley in Fifth Avenue. And this is just a aerial view looking at the property. You see the alley. This is Fifth Avenue. It sits on the corner of the alley, Fifth Avenue. Back here where there's the yellow vehicle and a couple vans is where they would add the addition onto the rear of the house. Uh, the applicant did indicate that one of the reasons he's asking for the reduced uh, setback is he would like to put the addition on the house, not further back, tucked in behind the house because he's had some vandalism and some uh, issues with people breaking into his vehicle so uh, this would uh, get the, the the addition out closer to the alley where it'd be more visible and then this is just a site plan showing the alley fifth avenue this is the existing house and then this would be the addition just extending uh, southerly uh, off the end of the house uh, with that i have nothing more add and i'll turn it back over to the chair did you say how many units were in the? This is a single family home. Oh, sorry. Yep. I thought, never mind. It is zoned multifamily, but uh, it's allowed in the uh, multifamily zoning district as a single family home. Thank you. Is the petitioner present? If you could come forward, please, and state your name and address for the record, please. Omar Ali. 1808 Hamilton Street, Southwest. And what would you care to add to the case? Uh, just I'm trying to make a garage and they got a neighbor with me here. Uh, they broke in my car a couple of times. They stole in the keys and I have to pay 500 just for the keys to program the key. And I like to have a garage attached to the house because it's a small area. Thank you. Any questions for the petitioner from the board? The conditions that were mentioned by Vern are okay with you? Uh, uh, would, oh, oh. Three conditions that were read. Uh, <coughs> were they, where you'll uh, obtain the building permits and in final inspections as required by the city? Yeah, I will do that. The uh, you'll remain in compliance with the zoning ordinance for the zoning enforcement. And the third one, I can't read. What? Actually, actually, there's two conditions. It's the applicant and property owner shall remain in compliance with all provisions of the zoning ordinance and comply with all applicable dates prescribed by the zoning enforcement and the zoning inspector. There's some code compliance issues with the property, and they need to work with the uh, our zoning enforcement people to uh, stay on schedule and, and meet those timelines. Yeah, I, I work with the city and what they need to do, I will work with him. I are there any objectors present? There are none. Any further questions or comments from the board? Mr. Chairman, I would move the variance 
02474-2017 be granted because of uh, that detrimental. Second. Subject to the conditions that were read. Still second, Mr. Van Kira. Second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? There's none. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. You can follow up with building services for next step. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, the next item is also a variance. Uh, this is a <coughs> variance VAR-024755-2017-2018. This is for property at 1027 Ninth Street Southwest. This is a consideration of a variance request for a screening waiver in an OS zoning district as requested by CR Riders LLC and as an applicant and Andrew Paul who's the authorized representative for that organization. Uh, the applicant is requesting a screening waiver. This property was recently rezoned uh, to OS. Um, the screening is required per code when it's adjacent to a single family residential property. Uh, the joining residential property owners have approached the city and the uh, CR Riders LLC and requested that they not install the screening. They do not want it there. Uh, and when you see the, the uh, street view, I think you'll kind of see why they don't. Uh, the signs were posted, no objections uh, were received. Uh, we would uh, ask that if uh, the board were to approve this, that they would uh, approve it subject to one condition, and that's if the future owners of the future owners of the adjoining residential property requested screening, the property owners at 1027 Ninth Street Southwest uh, being uh, CR riders would uh, need to install that fence to code at that time. This is the uh, property, this is uh, 10th Avenue, Ninth Street, just to the uh, east off the map is 6th Street Southwest. You can see uh, to the south, it's primary railroad tr primarily railroad tracks and industrial type uses, and to the north, uh, single family residential. And then this is the street uh, view. This was a Quonset hut. Now it's uh, kind of an organization for a motorcycle group. Uh, they rezoned it to OS. This is the property owner adjacent to it that is requesting that the uh, screening be waived. Uh, they have a picket fence along here and some plantings and a flower bed and, and by putting that screening in it would be disruptive to uh, what they've done with their side yard so uh, they're in support of the uh, uh, waiver of the screening requirements uh, with that i have nothing more to add and i'll turn it back to the chair thank you is the petitioner present if you could come forward and state your name and address for the record please my name is Andrew Paul, 1803 Driftwood Lane, Northeast. And what would you care to add to the request? Uh, just that this picture is extremely outdated. We've done significant updates to the building and the quality of the outside appearance is uh, tenfold of what you're seeing on this screen. It used to be an auto body shop and we've spent several years repairing the outside and making it look better. There is a certified leather letter also from our neighbor that was signed by a notary and he's actually present today if you guys would like to ask him any questions. Other than that, I'm just here to answer anything you guys have. Thank you. Any questions from the board? On the picture up there is the property line. Uh, it looks like on the, it would be the north fence, the white, you see the white fence? Yeah, that is actually not the property line. The property line extends about four feet into the grass area on the north side of the property. Um, the current neighbor has taken care of that property for something like 30 years uh, it's always been an agreement between him and the previous owner and between us when we purchased the property that he just kind of maintained it um, if we were to have to put the screening in we would basically have to rip out that fence and all of their landscaping that they've had for several decades Are there any objectors present? There are none. Any further questions from the board? Mr. Chair, I'd like to move that we 
Approve variance 024755-2017, subject to conditions, the condition of, uh, set by the development staff, citing unique circumstances. Second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? There's none. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Can follow up with building services for any next steps on that. All right, the next uh, variance is uh, variance VAR-024761-2017 for property located at 933 14th Avenue Southwest. This is a consideration of a variance request for an expansion of a non-conforming use in an R3 uh, single family residence zone district. And it's also zoned uh, I-1 light industrial zone district as requested by uh, Timothy Phillip. Uh, just a little background, uh, this is a non legal non-conforming property. The bulk of the property is zoned I-1 light industrial zone district. There is a, a narrow three-foot strip on the westerly side of the property that's zoned R-3 single-family residence zone district. This is a, uh, an existing long-established uh, neighborhood tavern. Uh, the expansion would be of the upper level, which was previously used for storage. Uh, the staff has not identified any major issues or concerns other than that they need to work with the building services department to make sure they get their appropriate uh, building permits and inspections. Uh, signs were posted and no objections were received. I uh, did have a call from the neighboring property uh, to the west uh, next to the three-foot strip that zoned uh, a single-family residential. Apparently uh, there was a in addition on this uh, existing building tavern that this has been torn off and they just uh, wanted to make sure that that was not going to be rebuilt and based on the site plan that the city received showing uh, the layout of the upper floor what they're proposing to do with it uh, they are not uh, showing that and if they were to come in and want to put that on they'd have to get building permits and they'd have to come back through a similar process like this so that the neighbors would be notified this is just an aerial photo showing the uh, property. This is uh, fairly close to where we just looked at the tow uh, communication tower site. Uh, this is 14th Avenue, 10th Street, kind of almost dead ends right into the uh, existing property. And then this is looking from uh, 14th back uh, to the uh, south. This is the existing uh, tavern uh, with their existing parking. This was the property owner that had concerns with the addition on the side of the building that had been removed and they would uh, prefer that that not be reinstalled. Uh, with that, I really don't have anything more to add and I'd turn it back over to the chair. Thank you, is the petitioner present? If you would come forward please and state your name and address for the record. Uh, my name's Tim Phillip, 1942 Lake Manor Road, Northeast Solon. And what would you care to add to the request? I just want to put it back up like it was before so we can have a little bit more room in there. It's not going to be open all the time just for meetings or somebody renting it out or every now and then you have some musicians up there or, or karaoke. That's about all I got to say. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Are there any questions from the board? Are there any objectors present? There are none. Any further comments or questions from the board? Mr. Chairman, I would make a motion to approve variance 024769-2017 citing um, not detrimental. Second. Motion and a second. <coughs> Any further discussion? There is none. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. You can follow up with the building services for right. the next step. All right, thank you. Thank you. The last item on new business is another variance. This is a variance VAR-024808-2017 uh, for property at 2373 Thompson Street Southeast. This is consideration of a variance request for a design waiver for a detached uh, garage in the 
Oops. Oh, I'm sorry. I skipped ahead. It isn't the last item. This is uh, variance uh, VAR-024769-2017 for... 2713 Union Drive Southwest. Uh, this is consideration of a variance request for a time extension to maintain an existing 21 by 12 foot uh, single story uh, detached accessory structure without a principal permitted use uh, structure in the R1 single family residence zone district as requested by Kevin Va uh, Van Houten and uh, Travis Martin. Uh, this is uh, a property that has a single family home on it. Uh, they're looking at demolishing that home. Uh, the property is zoned R1. The applicant plans to obtain a building permit for a new home in 2018. Uh, the gravel driveway will need to be paved as part of that. Uh, the accessory lot uh, t is uh, will be relocated on the property. Uh, there's been no major issues or concerns identified and signs were uh, posted, no objections received. Uh, there are three conditions. The property shall be in compliance within one year of the building permit being issued. A certificate of occupancy shall be obtained on or before November 1st of two uh, 2019. Property must remain in compliance with all building, property maintenance and nuisance codes. Uh, the remaining detached accessory structure should not be used for parking or uh, storing vehicles, rather for maintenance of uh, property uh, like lawnmowers and those types of things. Uh, this is an aerial uh, view of the property. This is East Road. Uh, this is basically the Worthington Acres uh, area and then Highway 30 along the north side. This is a uh, street view. This is the existing house that will be demoed. I believe the garage is already gone, and this is the structure that they would be looking at uh, uh, keeping and moving. This is the existing location of the structure. They'd be moving it back here at the uh, southeast corner of the lot, uh, and the reason for the condition to not allow it for vehicle storage or parking is that they would, in order to do that, they would need to have a hard surface driveway to it, and, and they don't plan on doing that, so it would be just for storage of yard equipment and stuff uh, stuff of that nature. Uh, with that, I have nothing more to add and I'll turn it back over to the chair. Thank you, is the petitioner present? Come forward and state your name and address for the record. Uh, my name is Travis Martin, uh, 1709 Texas Ave Northeast. And what would you care to air, add to your request? Um, I guess one thing I noticed that um, Ruth had put on that we're planning on building in 2018, it's actually the very early part of uh, spring of 2019. So I guess all we're looking for is a time extension for the allowable uh, accessory structure, um, just like like it said, for lawnmowers and um, just to keep the yard maintained instead of overgrown like the previous owner. What, uh, just to clarify, when would you expect to be completed with uh, construction then, if you started in the spring of it you would said be, spring of 2019? Yes, it would be, uh, I think that's 90 to 120 days from groundbreak. It's a, I don't think the term is prefab, but it's where they build the walls and bring it in and then just kind of put it together. So the, the builder told us that it would take um, 90 to 120 days. And Vern, was your recommended condition one year from today? No, the condition was that they, uh, they would have to have the uh, uh, final certificate of occupancy on or before November 1st of 2019. Thank you. So if they pull a permit early that year and, and based on the time frame, the applicant's uh, uh, telling us that that time frame for uh, final CO should still be in line. Thank you. And Any other questions? Oh, go ahead. Um, and the other reason we're doing this now is because the builder suggested that we remove the current structure since part of our foundation will be where the current house is and he says if it if the ground hasn't settled it could damage our uh, basement okay. thank you any other questions from the board for the petitioner are there any objectors present there are none any other comments or questions from the board
Mr. Chairman, I would move the variant 024769-217 be granted because of unique circumstances. Subject to the conditions. Second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? There's none. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. You can follow up with building services for anything else. Thank you. Now the last item in old business. Or new, yeah, new, sorry. Yeah. Now we're on to the last new business item. Okay. This is also a variance, uh, VAR-02-4808-2017. This is for 2373 Thompson Street uh, Southwest, this is or Southeast. This is consideration of a variance request uh, for a design waiver for a t detached garage uh, in an R1 single family residence zone district uh, as requested by Greg Maker. Uh, they're looking at building a 1,200-square-foot uh, detached accessory structure, which would be a garage. If it exceeds 900 square feet, based on the code, it needs to have uh, similar or the same type of exterior materials uh, as the primary structure being the home on the site. Uh, the applicant is requesting the variance uh, uh, because uh, they feel that it's not necessary because the structure will be about 35 feet behind the existing home. It will not be very visible from the street. Uh, there's been no major issues identified by staff, and the signs were posted and no objections have been received. Now, this is just uh, the aerial photo of the property. This is in the Round Pot area. This is Stewart Road, 24th Avenue, Thompson uh, Street, uh, and then the property. These are fairly large lots out in this area. And then this is a street view of the lot uh, this is the, the house on the lot. The garage would be tucked in back behind the home. Uh, this is the uh, site plan showing the uh, uh, existing structure. This is Thompson Street, the neighboring home with a garage. This was a garage that had been de 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 demolished, I'm sorry. And uh, this is the location of the uh, 30 by 40 foot structure uh, being back behind where the existing garage uh, sat. Um, with that, I have nothing more to add, and I'll turn it back to the board. Thank you. Is the petitioner present? If you could come forward and state your name and address for the record, please. All right. Gary Maker, 2373 Thompson Street, Southeast. And what would you care to add to your request? The existing garage hasn't been demolished because we build a new garage first. But there's one side wall is completely rotted out, and one side of the roof is rotted out. So I need to build a new garage either way. I have storage issues with the size of the existing garage. So I was looking to build it bigger so I have room for storage for vehicles and motorcycles and yard equipment. And that's it. I think there's four other post frame buildings in the neighborhood. But ultimately, just so everyone's clear, the existing would be removed. Yeah. Any questions from the board? Vern, what are the lot dimensions? It looks like a longer lot than it is wide, or do yeah, you know? I actually own two lots. They are longer than wide. Pardon me? I own, I own two lots, the 90, the one next to that, the empty one, I own that one too. But I think it's 100 feet wide with both lots and 180 deep. The, so the, the other lots in the area are? Similar size, yeah. But 90 feet yeah. frontage? If you have 180? Across, there, it's, it's, I think it's 180 deep. 180 deep? Yeah. And what's the frontage? I think it's 100 wide. 100 wide, so this one's 200 or is this 50? Well, it, it's 100 with both, they're, they're 50 each. Gotcha. Yeah, and, and those lots are combined uh, as one tax parcel and one zoning lot. So yes, there's lot two. No. They're combined, it's one lot. Are there any objectors present? There are none. Any other? 
questions. Gordon, I guess I'd ask you a question. I mean, typically when we've approved these storage garages before, you guys have put a condition on it for that it's storage only, not for commercial use, that type of thing? Yeah, we could certainly add that condition that the garage would be only uh, used for the personal use of the residents uh, on the primary, of the primary structure that re that's on the lot, and I think that's not a bad idea. Uh, and also that the uh, driveway be hard surfaced. I, I wouldn't have a problem if the board wanted to add those two conditions. I think it's probably a good idea. You have any problem with either one of those? No, huh. <clears throat> Mr. Chair, I'd like to move that we approve variance 024808-2017, subject to the conditions of uh, that this would be a building for personal use only, not for any commercial, and also a hard surface driveway to the new building. Uh, citing unique circumstances. Second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? <coughs> there is none. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. You can follow up with building services for next step. Thank you. Okay, the last item on the uh, agenda is an old business item. Uh, this is a uh, variance request, uh, VAR-02. 3565 2016. Uh, the property is at uh, 1502 C Avenue Northeast. Uh, this is consideration of a variance request for a time extension uh, to a triplex to maintain the legal non conforming use in the R3D two family residence zone district uh, as requested by Jamie Hoth. Uh, this property was granted a time extension. Uh, they one of the conditions was that if they if the time extension were coming up but which it is and was ready to expire and they needed more time that they would need to come back and ask the board for additional time they're really asking for only 30 days they've been actively working in good faith on this property to restore it um, the re work remaining uh, is they need to um, get the uh, gas pressure test interior painting install a few doors uh, shower surround needs to be installed and clean up due to construction. Uh, the work that has been completed uh, since they uh, got a, uh, a extension from the board is they've done, so they've done framing, drywall, new light fixtures, repair of windows, window ropes and screens, new furnace and new duct work. As there was no duct work uh, in this property, previously there was a boiler system uh, radiators have been removed, plumbing repaired, uh, new flooring in all three units. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, the applicant is asking for 30 more days to get the rest of this work done. Uh, and staff feels that uh, based on a good faith effort on what they've done and the investment they've made in the property that we would be uh, okay with the board granting that additional time. Uh, with that, I have nothing more to add and I would turn it back over to the chair. Thank you. Is the petitioner present? If you could come forward, please, and state your name and address for the record, please. My name is Jamie Hilf, 665 49th Street in Marion. And what would you care to add to your request? Um, just the last time I was here, I was in the process of purchasing the property. So we had limited access to it. I felt the time frame was pretty reasonable. We have been working on it, like they said, spent a lot of time and money, and uh, just asking for a little more time to get finished up. In 30 days is sufficient? Yeah, or end of the month is kind of what we were shooting for was, would be fine. End of this month or end of June? End of this month, okay. but 30 days, whatever is reasonable. Any other questions for the applicant from the board? Are there any objectors present? If you could just make some room, if you could come forward, sir, and just state your name and address for the record, please. Clark, um, Clark Rieke, can you hear me if I'm not mm -hmm. running over? Yes. 1614 D Avenue Northeast, a couple blocks from the, from the property. 
and uh, I met met the owner, and he was gracious enough to show me through the the triplex. Um, my concern, first of all, the property is causing no harm to the neighborhood as is. I mean, the extension of time costs us nothing. The real issue here is parking. It's non-conforming use, and it has just one off-street um, curb cut with, with some tandem space. But a triplex should normally have six off-street parking. And then the other thing that happens is it's right across from the Cole football field. So 15th Street there is 30 feet wide but it's got 17 feet of grass on both sides. Mm -hmm. And there's game day when parking's really limited. But a, a triplex non-conforming in this neighborhood, in this block right now, because there's two other properties that are substandard in the, in the block, I manage uh, properties two blocks away from there, and it makes it really hard to get a good tenant. And so a property that's a triplex non-conforming can cause tenant issues that safe CR was meant to help reduce, it can, it can pull the property down. But if the fact that it faces Co, it's got good football field, it's got good curb appeal and everything, makes it a good chance that it won't be a property, even as a non-conforming triplex, to pull neighborhood values down. But if the parking could be improved, it would increase the chances greatly and it would increase the value of the property greatly. Um, they bought it for under 50000 which is, you know, $12 a square foot for the building. I mean, that's, that's, that's a real good cash flow situation, but it's not the normal sense of what an equity landlord situation is, and I just know how hard it is to get a good tenant right in that neighborhood right now. So I was just thinking if the owner would be willing to talk to Cole, Cole about some enhanced parking right along there with their football field issue and their, their sports events parking issue. It would seem to me that one of those 17-foot boulevards that's all grass could be upgraded to some real good parking. And then what happens right now is the parking is restricted. So next to the duplex, it's not allowed. You've got to be across the street, which is the Cove football field side of the street. Well, if they there's a bunch of ideas that could be done that I think would enhance Co's parking, enhance the parking for the triplex, and make the whole neighborhood, everybody, a win-win. And I just, this might not even be the forum to bring it up, but I just wanted to, to suggest it here because I don't know who else cares. So um, I, can, I can follow up. We, I talked to Co, or I, Co was informed of this hearing. Mm -hmm. the notice isn't big, and they had graduation yesterday and they said we just can't think about it till this week sure so a little time on, on their part might help 30 days is nothing the time limit really isn't the issue the issue is for you guys to have the power to have an incentive to have co and this owner get together and try and make it better for the neighborhood i appreciate that I, next door I, I think and i'll let Vern help me out but i think really given what's already transpired i think we're only looking at whether or not we should grant an extension versus that, that's correct and and not unlike a lot of other older neighborhoods you know even with co being there uh these neighbor these neighborhoods do have parking issues sometimes mm -hmm. um mr Riki has brought up some suggestions on how some of that might be <clears throat> relieved and and I think outside of this venue we could work with community development maybe the traffic engineering department to see if there's an opportunity to to do some angled parking on one side of the street or or maybe not have restricted parking on one side of the street if the street's 30 foot wide that's plenty wide enough to accommodate parking on both sides of the street in our new residential subdivisions we do 28 foot wide streets back a curb back to curb which allows parking on both sides of the street so maybe there could be just without doing any reconstruction that could be uh the parking could be added uh, but at this point really the board is considering whether whether or not to grant that 30-day extension but i think uh as i said uh those are good points and uh maybe we need to get uh, co and maybe community development and traffic engineering together to see if there's some 
some uh, solutions to resolve some of the parking issues. That might be the best venue, sure. but I appreciate you sure. bringing it just to, hear to everyone's attention. Yes. Yeah. My guess is this side's restricted because Co asked for it in order to have more parking for game day. Okay, but it, but it's it should it should be on the real easy parking permits sign that's put up to make everybody win win. The last thing I'll just say is the first time they considered the the extension last time, I, I did a little thinking of the property and, and research, and at that time. I delivered n newsletters to the n to this property for, for a couple of years because we're an active neighborhood, and my sense was that it really wasn't operated as a triplex for quite a while because it's too hard to manage for the previous owner. And so when you have these kind of situations, I talked to the city, and the one way to verify that I, I, I heard by the grapevine is you look at the utility usage. And you can kind of tell whether it was used as a triplex or not by utility usage. The last thing I just thought of on top of my head, I think there's a code that says triplexes don't like shared air heating units. And when you go from boiler to forced air furnace, you end up with shared air. And that, I mean, I've been in the situation where I rented a triplex room like this and shared air didn't bother me a bit because I was blessed to have it. But, but that is a code issue, and when you're upgrading, maybe even a way to just make, uh, if a duplex can have it and a triplex can't, well then maybe you put electric heating in the triplex unit, just, it's an extra cost, but it gets you a little more towards conformity. Yeah, and, and that's a goal that our neighborhood needs so sure. bad for values. Thank you. Thank you. And, and I, again, Vern, correct me if I'm wrong, that anything, we're just talking about the extension, but all the improvements that the applicant has made had, would have to be up to the code and yeah, all and, the applicable. And standards. he's gotten the appropriate building permits, and prior to issuance of building permits, all of those code issues are, are checked by our plan checkers mm -hmm. so if they're proposing to do something that doesn't meet code they would have to modify their plan before they got sure. the permit great thank you any other further questions or comments from the board mr. chairman I would make a motion to approve variants Zero two three five six five dash two zero one six um citing not detrimental, it's an additional thirty days, so and so do you want to put uh clarify your days or a date certain to your um motion? Yeah, I mean I'd, I I would just say today. yeah, thirty days from today is fine. And what would that date be then? Is it June 8th. That, June 8th. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. Second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? There is none. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you. Subject Thank you. to the, the unstated discussion that you've heard about things out as you've tried so far sure. on the parking. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other items before the board? That's all I have. We'd certainly entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. We are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.